Hello there, good morning, and welcome to Tunbridge Today with Sasha Fernandez and Cameron Pierce. On today, um, should Tunbridge go through with the uh, construction of the skate parks? Is Tunbridge Wells actually haunted, or is it just conspiracies? And how has Swanley changed over the years? We'll find out in today's show. Um, today, we've got our first guest, Barney Moff, who's going to be talking about the skate about skating. As a skateboarder, the rhythmic clatter of wheels on pavement is not just a means of transportation, but a form of self-expression. Unfortunately, the world often views us through a lens clouded by negative stereotypes. People assume we're rebellious troublemakers or careless adolescents, ignoring the camaraderie and creativity that thrive within our community. The truth is, there's a diverse group of individuals united by a love for the sport. Skateboarding isn't about defying authority, it's about defying gravity and finding freedom in every kickflip and body. It's time to shatter the stereotypes and let the true spirit of skateboarding shine through. It's about feeling the rush of wind as you roll down the street, interpreting the urban landscape as your own canvas for tricks and manoeuvres. The board becomes an extension of yourself, responding to the subtle shifts in weight and balance. There's a unique thrill in mastering a new trick after countless attempts, a sense of accomplishment that goes beyond societal judgments. It's not just a sport, it's a lifestyle that fosters resilience. Every scratch on the deck tells a story, a testament to the journey of a skateboarder weaving through the concrete jungle with an unrivaled sense of freedom. The T-Boys. The T-Boys made a name for themselves in Tom Wells for all the reasons you would expect. Created by Jude Harrison, the group gained exposure after their full-length film, It's a Sony, which has gained thousands of views from all over the world. Perceived by the many as troublemakers, to me, they are an inspiration, even as such as to get me into filmmaking. People from all over the southeast will travel to Timberdraw to skate spots that have over time become a staple in the skate scene. Last year a fundraiser was set up to attempt to refurbish our local skate park. The plans were made and blueprints have been drawn out, but the only issue now was receiving permission from the council. It was always going to be a difficult task. As of now, the fundraiser is sad just over £3,000. This is how skateboarding should be viewed by the public. Well, it's lovely to have you here, Barney. Thank you for having me. I've got some questions for you. Yes. So, what inspired you to start skating and how long have you been doing it? Uh, as I mentioned in my video, there was a, a group in Tunbridge Wells who um, I used to see out on the streets and they were really a joy to watch. Um, so what made you create the skateboarding film? So I wanted to uh, address the issues of how uh, we're perceived by the public and I wanted to try and raise awareness on how it should be changed. That's, that's true, that's fair. Mm. Um, how do you feel about the stereotypes that surround the, skate, the skateboarding community? I think they're unfair and it's, it's often perceived by the media and it goes back many years to when it, the times were different, but it's changed now. Is there a message that you wanted to convey to your audience while creating this film? Yes, um, I wanted to show that it's not what everyone thinks, we're not troublemakers, it's about getting out outdoors and it's often a good boost of confidence and it helps preserve, build your resilience. Perfect, thank you, thank you so much for being here. That's okay. And now, onto our next segment. 
Have you ever felt like something has been off within the town of Tunbridge Wells? Well, perhaps your suspicions may not be all made up. Here we've got Holly Pantry's report on the ghosts of Tunbridge Wells. The Pantiles. The Pantiles, which had famously been frequented by King Charles II, King James I and Queen Anne, also Victoria herself. It is said that when you tread the cobblestone path in the Pantiles, you may not be travelling alone. There are tales of dread who walk among us at the Pantiles. Tunbridge Hotel, or the Swan Hotel, was said to be the venue for some strange sightings many years ago. The hotel was known as High House. It is said that a young woman jumped to her death broken-hearted after being refused to access her lover. Her ghost is said to haunt room 16, and screams can be heard in the dead of night, supposedly the echoes of her screams as she died. Guests have reported their sheets being thrown across the room in room 16. A grey woman has also been spotted at the hotel during the 1990s. The older story says that the site has been haunted by a girl who calls out the name John. It's not clear whether this is the same ghost in room 16. The Common and the High Rocks The common land is said to be haunted by a few ghosts, including a large drunken woman who shouts at people as they walk past, by a phantom female who has reportedly been calling out the name Daniel. The woman has never been seen but is thought to be a lady who fell from the high rocks in the nearby Wellington Rocks. There is also said to be a horseman seen dressed in all black riding a black horse near the area. So, do you think there's any truth to these stories? Or do you think they're all fiction? Maybe next time you're walking in the dark down Tom Patrols? See if you hear anything. See if you see anything. You never know what might be around the corner. Wow, that was spooky. <laughs> All right. Wow, that was spooky. Agreed. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm much of a believer in the supernatural, but that has made me start to question things a little bit. I agree. Anyway, moving on. Have you, noti have you noticed any changes in your neighbourhood recently? Well, we have Jamie here uh, with how Swanley has changed in the past 10 years. Nice to see you, Jamie. Nice, nice to see, see you. you too. How are you doing? Doing all right, how are you guys? Not too bad. Yeah, pretty good. We've got a couple questions to ask you about your uh, production, but first we'd like to show the audience what you have created for them. So where are we going? I'm back to my childhood, Swanley. Located in the southeast of London and best known for having White Oak Leisure Centre and Swanley Park with an estimate of 17,000 people, Swanley has slowly grown over 100 years of being established as a little village in the late 1800s to becoming an entire town. First of all, let's go to our house. So that's our old house down there. Done a massive extension on the thing. This whole place has changed, I think. So yeah, nothing, nothing at all has changed about the house. When did you leave? Mm, around February 2021. But yeah, this is the elephant park. So my mum's lived in Swanley all her life. Those fences weren't there when she was a kid and then they got put in just before we moved. These are new. They wasn't here until, until we left. We used to play football all the time, which funny enough used to be horizontal and there used to be a massive goalpost all the way up there. The arrival of the railway changed life in Swanley. 
as the town became the location of Swanley Horticultural College, which opened in 1887, and led to horticulture becoming the predominant industry. So, this is our school, Orchards Academy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, obviously a massive green fence. Yeah, they're obviously doing the whole thing up, refurbishing it or something like that. And funny enough, um, there's a famous footballer that came to this school, Ruben Loftus-Cheek was actually in my sister's class and was never in class because obviously he was training for training for his football. I'm not a big football fan myself, but it's quite cool that someone big come out of it. So, would you move back here? No. Um, I'm quite glad I moved. We moved when we moved. And uh, it's change. Change is good. The population has increased through the years, as well as the crime rates being from 5.2% in November 2022 to 6.6% in February 2023. So in January 2023, there has been a report of 23 crimes, but that is nothing compared to later that year in November, where it shot up to 53 crimes. Down there used to be a massive charity shop, and um, it's obviously all got, um, all got redesigned, all got taken out and put into flats. And this massive um, blocked off wall, there used to be a massive pub. Uh, my dad and my uncle used to go to all the time, every Thursday, I think. But it all got blocked off, all got dismantled. They haven't done anything with it since. Something I forgot to mention is that in May 2021, this used to be a community centre that was abandoned for years and got changed into flats. And this one somehow finished before this one. If you look at these pictures, it's crazy to think that in eight years, it just looks like a completely new town. It's all gone. Yeah, just this building here was the Nat West and it's all been taken out. It's so strange to think that how, um, how it's changed so much. Like, not really in recent years, but in, since my nan was a kid, because she's lived here all her life, my mum. The road here used to go all the way up, up to there. So in conclusion, Swanee has got worse throughout the years, starting off with the houses here. The average price of a house in the UK is around £300,000, whereas here in Swanley, it's shot up to 415,000. The crime rates have also gone up, which makes it more unsafe for people to live here, as well as building flats right in the middle of the town with not a lot of parking, which ends up creating more traffic for the public. So, now with the questions on this interesting insight on Swanley. Uh, firstly, how long have you lived in Swanley? Uh, just over 15 years. So I've been there since I was born, 2005, and left in February 2021. And uh, what made you move? Uh, it wasn't really my decision. I, I didn't really want to leave. Um, but my my mum wasn't. Um, no, my dad wasn't happy because we live like right next to like the massive roads and the the train. He just didn't really like the noise, so we moved. What made you not want to leave? Uh, it, it was mainly my childhood. I, I've been there yeah. mostly all my life, so I kind of got used to the place. Um, and I, I just didn't really want to move because it was right next to the school. So yeah. it was like, quite handy just to walk rather than take the train, which I had to do. Well, what inspired you to create this film about your childhood home? Um, I think it's because I haven't been there for a long time um, and do something uh, different and like nostalgic. Um, to, to see how much it changed because I, I haven't been there since I left. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to see uh, what the whole place was like, really. So, what would you say are some of the changes that you've noticed in Swanley? Uh, mainly the houses in the, the middle of the town um, because they, they weren't there when I left. There was, there was the, the community centre. Yeah. And that got changed into massive flats, which, which was weird to look at in my opinion, and uh, ma and the school as well with the massive green fence which they've done over. It wasn't like that. Did, did it bother you that it, it changed from like a, a more of like a retail area to more of a residential area? Or did you just not really? Mm, uh, it didn't really bother because I don't live there anymore, so yeah. it didn't really matter, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and is there a particular message you want to bring across to the viewers about Swanley uh, with your film? Um, probably don't live in Swanley because it's got, <laughs> it's got worse throughout the years. Um, but if it, I mean, if you, if you need somewhere to live, then fair enough, then live there. But uh, it's not the greatest place to live, to be honest. 
so where do you currently live? I uh, live in West Morning. Um, no, Barman actually, but I'm moving to West Morning in like next month. Yeah. So you, well, have you been like just moving around constantly over the past few years? Yeah, pretty much, because my parents aren't settled. Really, yeah. So we're kind of moving to get settled, really. <laughs> well, thank you for coming on the show, Jamie. It's no, thank been you for having a me. pleasure. Much, much appreciated. Thank you for having me. And that concludes this morning's program with Tunbridge Today. I'm Sasha Fernandez. And I'm Cameron Pierce. Uh, and goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>